Higher Vets Medallion Program here in military uh, in Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. And we have uh, three guests today. Deb Nakashima from the state and Green Greenlee uh, from the Fed and uh, Charles Chai from private industry, all dedicated to hmm, encouraging the hire of vets, which is what it's about. Am I right? Am I right so far? Perfect. Okay. All right, welcome to the show, all of you guys. Uh, and let's start with you because, you know, you're the Fed and, and the Fed is very important in our, <laughs> our time. <laughs> <laughs> you have federal preemption here on the show, you know? Uh, <laughs> so, okay, so this federal program called the Vets Medallion Award Program. Can you tell us what that is and how it achieves, uh, you know, the purpose of encouraging local communities to hire vets? Sure. The Hire Vets Medallion Award Program, we call it HVMP. Um, yeah, is, we do too. My wife and me at dinner, we refer to it all the time. I would think so. It's, okay, it's common you. knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the only national award program of its kind. It's an annual award, uh, and it recognizes employers of all sizes who are committed to hiring, training, and retaining veterans. The award honors employers' investments in recruiting and employing veterans. So that's the basics. Okay, how do I get the award? What do I have to do? What do I have to study? What do I have to, uh, what, what's, yeah. what, what do I put on my resume that will make me <laughs> get the award? <laughs> well, um, it's not that complicated. So the award was established by Congress in the uh, Higher American Military Veterans Act of 2017. And so it was established by Congress as an annual award and applications are open every year from January through 30 April. So you have to apply in that time frame. And then winners are announced every year in conjunction with Veterans Day. Um, the law mandated that no federal tax money could be used for this award. And so there is a small application fee that employers pay when they do apply for the award. So how do you do it? Well, there are eligibility criteria at hirevets.gov. Really important to remember, hirevets.gov. So no matter your business size or your business type, there are set eligibility criteria. If you meet the criteria, if you apply, you get the award. No further competition. You mean there can be a lot of them? Sure. Okay. All right. I like that. You can hardly <laughs> lose. <laughs> well, that's right. You can't. So if you meet the criteria, you get the award if you apply. So in general, well, what are the criteria, right? And, and they vary a little bit, but I'm going to talk about in general, if you're a small business and you want the gold award, which is the base award, then a company has to have not less than 7% of the employees they hire be veterans, or not less than 75% of veterans hired are retained for at least a year, mm -hmm. and at least 7% of employees are veterans. So if we're talking about a very small company with 10 employees, that's, we're talking one person is, is really the... Uh, Let me see if I got that right. It's A or B plus C. You got it. All right. Okay. And then if you, there's a higher level award, a platinum award, and that has additional criteria. And the bigger your business, the more measures you have to meet to be eligible for the award. But it's all set out at hirevets.gov. Any employer can go look at that criteria and really know pretty much immediately whether or not they qualify for the award. Okay, do I get a check for a million billion? What happens? Oh, uh, well, if you wish, right? But if <laughs> when you get the award, what you do is you get a medallion, you get the thanks of a grateful nation for hiring vets, and then you can use that medallion in your marketing, on your website, um, 
when transitioning military members are leaving the active duty service and looking for civilian careers, they go through something called the transition assistance program on all the active duty bases, Department of Labor runs. And we tell them that higher vet medallion employers are veteran friendly employers. So when you're looking for a good employer, a good company to work for, check hirevets.gov and see who those employers are because they really can make a difference. And then what else should I tell you about this? Uh, I have some questions for you. Uh, you? So, yeah, so this was adopted by Congress uh, and presumed signed into law in 2017. Yes. That's four years, five years ago already. Um, right. Has it been successful? A, have people applied and have awards been given? And how many, if you know? And B, has it in fact encouraged, you know, actively encouraged the hiring of vets? Well, we would like to say yes to all of your questions. So while Congress passed the law in 2017, you know how the bureaucracy moves. So the first year that the award was actually available to apply for was 2019. And each year we've had more and more companies apply and more and more companies um, be recognized. So I think the first year there was, I'm going to say around 200. Second year, there were around 400. Last year, there were around 800. Mm. Word is getting out and more and more employers are applying and being recognized. Now, does that improve veteran hiring? Well, I think so. You know, it is anything we can do as a nation to show that employers who hire veterans, it's a good thing, is really a good thing. Um, and for those federal contractors that might be listening in, one of the things federal contractors have to do is have an affirmative action plan that shows they proactively look to hire veterans. And certainly getting this award is one way that they can show the federal government that they are proactive in hiring. Well, and that would be a, a point in their favor on federal contracting in general. Yes. Ah, absolutely. important point. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's an important point. One logical so, thing strikes me, though, and you know, you, you want to retain people in the military, and here you are uh, awarding employers to hire them out of the military. Oh no, I I misspoke. If that was the impression, this has we do not. No, we don't want to do that. Um, the award just recognizes employers to hire people who have been in the military, who are veterans, who have left the military. Got it. Okay, very, very interesting. I, you know, and I hope you continue the program because there is, um, you know, I, I mean, would you say, and honestly, is there a bias against veterans in the business community? Not from my experience. When I go and talk to employers about hiring veterans, at least in Hawaii and, and Guam, and that's really my area of expertise, employers want to hire veterans. They can't get enough of veterans because they know how to be great team members, but they also know how to lead. So they're followers, they're leaders, they're reliable. When they say they're going to do something, they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I was telling you before that in my law firm, we always appreciated veterans for those exact reasons that you identified. That is a true statement uh, for most, if not all veterans, because the military does in, in it does, you know, make those things create those character points uh, that are so important in the marketplace. So let me let me move to uh, Deb. Deb. Um, is, is what Ann was saying, I mean, how much of it do you agree with? Oh, I, I agree with it. Um, the, the program that, that I manage, um, for the most part, um, works with our Hawaii National Guard members. So not only are they military members, but they're also out in the community working as civilian employees. Um, so I agree with a lot of what Ann says, um, because they bring... They bring a very, very good skill set into any um, private business employer, whether it's going to be a federal government employer, a state entity, um, a private business. Um, the skill set that they bring is very important. And, and our National Guard members being our, 
are what we call our, our citizen soldiers are, are basically military members who, ex who live in our community. They don't, they don't go anywhere. They stay here in Hawaii. Okay, the National Guard, the state National Guard um, qualify, I suppose this is a question that Ann can answer easily, uh, qualify for, for the award, for the Higher Vets Medallion Award, uh, do they? Is, is well, um, our, our Guard members, our National Guard members are considered to be veterans. Um, they do serve um, combat tours of duty. Um, they also serve, um, you know, other missions that will qualify them for veteran status, such as just just coming off these COVID orders. Um, COVID orders was a federal mission, so they have veteran status by by being on on these COVID orders. So definitely, they can they can benefit from companies, and companies can benefit from hiring them. Oh, what? But what about the National Guard itself? National Guard it itself, no. They they wouldn't they wouldn't apply to to be a higher vets medallion program because they are the military. They are the military. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's uh, that's great. So you have an interest in having the private sector um, hire from the National Guard and thus qualify for the vets medallion award. Are you? What do you do in that regard? Anything? Most definitely. So, you know, we look for companies that are here locally in Hawaii that are higher vets medallion award winners because we know they are going to be military friendly and our guard members, um, for the most part, are still serving in the service with their one weekend a month and two weeks out of the year. So we actively search for companies that are veteran and military friendly and having that higher um, the the Higher Vets Medallion Award um, tells us that they recognize the importance of veterans and the military. Mm. You know, Anne, that really sounds like, um, to the extent there's any resistance, you know, uh, against hiring veterans, the National Guard here locally, um, most of the members of the National Guard are local to begin with. Uh, and so there would be no resistance whatsoever. I mean, everybody in the package would be delighted, right, uh, to submit the applications and qualify for the award, seems like to me. Sure, if they have National Guard members as their employees, they qualify with those National Guard members. And yes, you know, it, for us, honestly, Jay, it's a matter of, it's a kind of new award. This is just the third year and getting the word out. It's, it's slowly trickling down, um, but our... Um, I, I mean, I think that's just it. Our, I'm going to say issue, and it's not an issue, but our opportunity is how do we best get the word out to Hawaii employers that there's this award, many can qualify, and then they can be recognized and honored for how they serve our nation's veterans. Sure, and they do. But question, you know, for some companies, the 7% rule, or was it the 70% rule? Um, you know, would be achieve achievable, attainable. For other companies, maybe not. Um, though, do you consider, uh, or is it written into the law, that these percentages will remain? Or will there come a time, you think, that they'll be adjusted either up or down? I don't know. I, I can't really speak to that. Um, but it would be something that would be done in the law versus by policy, because the law laid out the criteria. Okay. Charles, let's go to you. You, you have a role in all of this from the business sector itself. Um, and so what are you doing to advance either knowledge or uh, applications under the Vets Medallion Award Program? Are you publicizing it? Or are you encouraging employers to apply for it? Or are you taking affirmative steps to have them hire vets? Uh, thank you, Jay. Actually, I'm not doing any of those things because- I really scored uh, on that question. Yeah, yeah we're right. <laughs> no, actually, yeah, I am doing all those things, but from, from, the, from, from, the, from the, the, really the, the end result uh, of what we're trying to do. I myself uh, am a veteran. And so I know what veterans bring to the, to the team. And so uh, 
what what I'm trying to do is try to match up the skill sets that I know to be as very relevant and valuable in my on my team with those veterans who who bring in their experience to it. For example, uh, my uh, program manager is a, a retired Marine. He's a logistician. Uh, one of the first things that that uh, that we recently we got to, to be able to do on the Red Hill water contamination piece is that we were asked to to provide bottled water for eighty thousand uh, affected family members and population, twenty five different locations, and I would I would not think of anybody else but my program manager to be out there on on the ground figuring out the complex problem of distribution, doing it safely, and being able to get the resources and the labor to do what, what we needed to do. And so that is just a uh, on the ground example of the value of veterans. And so what I typically do is I seek veterans. My default position is looking for vet- veterans who could fill those positions first. And then, and then the higher veteran medallion is really just an affirmation of where we, where we think we are in having enough veterans on, on the team to do what we need to do. Have you uh, applied for the award? Have you received it? Will you? Uh, we received a 2021 uh, higher vets medallion uh, and we're reapplying for 2022 as well. Um, and I, I'll tell you that the value of the medallion for me is that Typically, these federal programs, they, it takes about somewhere between six to eight years for it, for it to really get absorbed into and be, become part of the policy and, and how it really uh, is effective in the community. You know, I retired back in 2011, and it's been in business, small business for about 11 years. And, and my default uh, position always is look for veterans to fill the positions that I need to fill. But because I live here, what I wanted to do was is keep the talent who are either retiring or coming out of the military or, and I've been in partners with, uh, with Deb on the uh, Hawaii National Guard piece. Uh, I know mo- almost all the senior leaders there as friends. And, I, and uh, you know, the first chance I get if there's an opportunity to hire a, a National Guardsman, and I would do it in a heartbeat. And part t- one of the reasons is to retain that talent here and and do it locally because a lot of times if a vet, if a veteran retiring veteran has a has a, a place to work uh, he rather stops thinking about moving back home because they love this island anyway and so i'm giving them a reason to stay and when the talent stay and our community becomes better oh sure there was an article in paper a couple of days ago about how we we, we lost 12,000 population in the past year or yeah. so. This is very troublesome. We want to offer veterans jobs because they're good employees. And, and of course, we want to keep them here because it's obvious that if they can't get a job, they're gone, 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 gone. Uh, yeah. That's only logical. So, um, you know, I, let, me, let me go back to you for a moment, and do you, do you affirmatively help companies like Shell's company find veterans? I mean... If he knows somebody, fine. But if he doesn't know anybody, somebody could help him find them. Is there an employment service involved here? There certainly is. I'm so glad you asked. So <laughs> from the at the federal level, we provide grants to all states to employ staff specifically to hire veterans and to work with employers on hiring veterans. So each state has those people that we are paying for, we being the federal government, and they work with local employers. Here in Hawaii, the local management information system is called HireNet Hawaii. That's where job seekers can register when they want to find work. You said veterans, right? You're talking about that, Not, not everybody. Just veterans. Yeah. No, everybody. Everybody. Oh, okay. But a veteran is flagged. A veteran, if they say okay. they're a veteran, they're flagged. Employers register there and they put their job openings. And then there are staff on the ground, you know, boots on the ground that talk between veterans and talk to employers and try to make uh, the match. They're matchmakers, if you will. And then we also have a national program that where 
the same thing happens, but on a national level where people that we employ go out nationally to employers and help make those connections to <laughs> state resources when they uh, when an employer needs people. So usually two or three times a week, an employer will be sending something to the national office who then comes to me because they're looking for an employee in Hawaii. And then I send it on to all of my contacts and say, hey, you know, this company is looking to hire. Um, and so it works that way. We also, with the transition assistance program, when people are leaving the military, uh, we have something called an employment navigator position. And those people specifically for transition, people that are leaving the military now and their spouses, no matter where they want to go, they're matchmakers. They say, okay, I want to go be work in disaster response, if you will, Chels, and I want to do it in this state. And then they, they can contact employers and try to make those matches for those service members as they're leaving the service. So, Deb, are you also involved in the sort of uh, placement um, process where you try to put people together with companies and so forth? Yes. So Work for, War Work for Warriors Hawaii is a National Guard Bureau funded program. And we have um, other collaborative states um, throughout, the, throughout um, the United States mainland. But our whole goal is employment services. So think of us as your your career counselor for National Guard members. Um, so to that extent, we help them with everything from the beginning to the end. They could be a brand new National Guard member, just finished their basic and their advanced training, maybe just graduated from high school a year ago looking for a civilian job. And then we'll, we will get them all the way up to where they're transitioning out of the National Guard and they still need to find a civilian job and we help them with looking for a civilian job. So our goal is to make sure that our Hawaii National Guard members are able to support themselves and be financially and fiscally um, stable so that one, they can stay in the National Guard and two, that they can stay and live in Hawaii. So we are their employment and career counselors. We liaison with businesses like Chell's. Um, we also do a oh, matching. You follow up, you follow up. It's not just the hire. No, you, we, you follow, up we follow up. We oh. do check up with them later. And so we follow up with them. We see how they're doing. Um, by the same token, we may follow up with the employer to see how the employee is doing. Um, for the guard member, we are we are confidential, so their unit does not know maybe if they're unemployed. Um, they come to us, we assist them with finding employment, and then we provide follow-up services to both them and, and the businesses that we work now with. Now, that's very considerate of you. Well, let me ask you this, though. I mean, it's my understanding that a lot of people in the, in the National Guard, in the Air National Guard, um, they're, they're like reserves. Uh, in other words, they, they don't work in the National Guard all the time. Uh, they may they have time to have a regular job, too. I mean, a, a day job, if you will. So, um, so, most... so are you going to help people find day jobs when they're already serving in the National Guard? That's what we do. That, that, is, that is my program in a nutshell. We are responsible for finding them civilian employment. That's going to be their 40 hour a week full-time job so that their traditional guard member duty, their one week in a month and two weeks out of the year is considered their part-time employment. Okay, what about, now you're a state organization. What about, and, and uh, Anne uh, referred to this, what about the people who are in, or were in military units elsewhere. Um, and she covers, uh, what did you say it was, Hawaii and Guam, was it? And, um, but there are, you know, there are people in the military all over the country, the world for that matter. Um, do they, are they qualify for your services? Do you help them? Do you hear they do from them? Qualify. They do qualify. So, so part of our mission is to support not only Hawaii National Guard members, but we also support, um, support our reserve component members, of which Hawaii has a reserve component of every military um, 
branch um, in the state, we also support veterans and we support family members. We also, through our um, work that we do with the transition assistance um, programs throughout the state, um, liaison a lot of times with active duty members that may be coming out of um, active duty service. They want to stay in Hawaii. We may need to localize, um, help them localize a search and we can help them with that also. But what we can about, also what about provide- the homeless? You know, everybody knows there are a lot of veterans. This is so sad and tragic. A lot of veterans leave the service. They have various impediments uh, and they ultimately wind up on the street. And suppose somebody like that walks into your office. Can you help that person get a job can, when that person is homeless? We can help that person. We also liaison with a lot of the community resources that we have within the local community. So we have um, other agencies that we can work with. Uh, we work with the Veterans Administration um, a lot of times, but we can make referrals to other community agencies that they may need resources to. I'm really, I'm really impressed. I'm impressed Jay? with what all you guys are doing. Yes, Anne. I just want to tell you about, again, the Federal Department of Labor. We provide competitive grants to organizations in each state that specifically work to provide employment services for homeless veterans. Um, that's their whole goal, their whole mission. So here in Hawaii, we have three grants to do that. Uh, two of the grants go to U.S. Vets. One is in Barber's Point and one is in downtown Honolulu. And the third grant is with Catholic Charities and they're up in Manoa. That's great. Um, let me go to you, Charles. Uh, have, have you hired, would you hire, do you contemplate hiring homeless vets? Uh, in a word, yes. Um, but I want to go back and answer your question about uh, the higher veterans uh, medallion award and how useful that could be. I really think that that will be useful in, in a future years, simply because it really means that the leadership of that corporation, that company, whether it's 50 employees like small as mine or 500 or a thousand. So it, it will eventually become a mark of someone, a veteran who's looking for someone who appreciates and, and, and grateful for the talent that they bring in. Uh, I support as, as a long, one of several of the companies and organizations, a Waimanalo uh, houseless settlement that's out there. And uh, of those, there is a handful of veterans that, that we used to, to tent out on Waimanalo Beach. They're now in that settlement. There may be different ways that we can we can and help support. Now, I have not yet. Uh, I think it's it's really good that there is a specific homeless veteran program. I have yet, uh, not yet, uh, have connected with them. But that's something that I will absolutely, you know, uh, willing to do. And uh, and of course, you know, what, what we're talking about here with Ann and Deb, uh, this is the reason why we get connected, and so that we continue to have this dialogue about. Who else can we support and help? It strikes me that companies have veterans in management like yours um, are having another benefit. You know, I mean, I'm a veteran too, you know, and um, I feel very strongly about take, taking care of them and making sure the VA takes care of them. Absolutely. So thank you. For me, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, thank you. So, so it's a psychic benefit. If I'm running a company and I have the ability to focus on veterans, it's, it improves my life as the manager. It improves my my world because I'm, as somebody said, I'm I'm doing national service by hiring veterans. I'm participating even though I'm I'm not in the service anymore. Uh, so this is this is bringing the country together. Is this part of your motivation? Absolutely. Yeah, well, I cannot agree with you more. And also, uh, I think at the end of the day, what we have is we're just bettering our community. And that's where we need to, to, to settle on is whatever that's good for the community. Uh, we're there for that. Well, it builds a better community to, to have a connection with the military. That's what that's what this show is all, all about. We're trying to explain the relationship 
of the local community and the military uh, going back to 1850 when the Navy brought its first shop, uh, ship into Pearl Harbor. In any event, um, you know, we're almost out of time, and I want to ask you guys to, um, you know, give your final message, takeaway message to the people who are listening, um, your message about the program, about the mission of the program, um, about the connection of the, uh, of the veteran community with the local Hawaii community, um, whatever, whatever you want. And uh, you're, again, you're the, the federal exemption, so you get to go first. Okay, and I'm just going to keep it really short so that employers who are interested know. HireVets.gov. It's where the criteria are, the FAQs, and the online applications are all there. HireVets.gov. You have to apply by 30 April. Every year. Every year. And, and the awards are announced when? Veterans Day. Oh, you mentioned November 11. Yeah, coming soon, actually, <laughs> in my view. Okay, Deb, uh, your, your words, your message you want to leave with people um, about, just... about what you do and about the relationship of what you do and what Pan, uh, Ann does. We just want to make sure that the community knows that we are out there, that we encourage you to empower yourselves by using resources such as ours, um, by doing research, um, looking up the Higher Vets Medallion program, and just, you know, it makes everybody in the community that much better and stronger. Yeah, I just wonder what happens if, if, if a company squeezes under the wire with the 7% and the 70% and all that, and then you have one employee who says, you know, I like this, but I think I'm going back in the service. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Already done. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> okay, that's good. You get credit anyway. It's a snapshot. As of the time you file the application, I like there that. There you go. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Okay, uh, Charles, your 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 thoughts to people, a message you want to leave with them about all of this. Well, first, I want to thank you, Jay, for highlighting uh, some of the work that's going on with Anne and, and Deb because they're really a uh, tremendous facilitator for for helping the veterans. If if you were to ask me, what else can we do? I would also add veteran spouses to the program and that they'd be recognized because, you know, in the army, we used to say we recruit a soldier, but we retain a family. And so having the spouses who are very, you know, selfless sacrifice there will be uh, pretty amazing. And the employers, especially when it comes to National Guardsmen, uh, uh, we are committed too because when they go and be there for a year, year and a half for COVID response that, that we have, a, something that guaranteed that, that those valuable team members will come back and have a place uh, to work in our team. And so with all of that, thank you so very much. You guys are great. You know what it's all about. Thank you so much, uh, Ann and Deb and Chels. Really appreciate thank you, your time. Thank, thank you. you, Jay. Aloha. Mahalo. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.